Hey everyone. In this video we're going to talk about Socrates and his views on education. So Socrates believed that the unexamined life is not worth living. And these words were spoken by Socrates in Plato's Apology, a partly fictional account of his speeches at the trial that led to his conviction and execution. So what do we know about uh, Socrates? We know that he was born in Athens, the son of a stonemason and a midwife. When he was younger, he conducted some military service. He hardly left Athens apart from this military service and he spent most of his life talking to the citizens of Athens. Uh, he was tried for impiety, for not believing in the city's gods and for corrupting the young. And for this, he was sentenced to death and executed. And he left a young wife and children. So Socrates is associated with a particular uh, idea of teaching, one that's based on questions and involves no direct transfer of information, but a method which allows the pupil to see the truth for himself or herself. Uh, Socrates denies that he is a teacher at all. He knows nothing so that he believes he, he has nothing to impart to anyone. If he is wiser than anyone else, it's only because he's aware of his own ignorance and he realizes that he needs to do something about it. So he goes about Athens and he asks other people questions to find someone who possesses the knowledge that Socrates himself is aware, he's aware of uh, that he lacks. If no one he questions turns out to know anything worth knowing apart from some particular kind of expertise like shoemaking or medicine, Socrates will have succeeded in showing himself and the other person too if he's prepared to listen that the other person doesn't know what he thought he knew. Socrates uh, usually extends an invitation to this newly self-aware person to continue the inquiry along with Socrates. And this resembles our modern notion of the Socratic method. However, it's a little bit different because in the modern, modern notion of uh, the Socratic method, we introduce it assuming that there are determinate truths to be learned, which is different from the way that Socrates used this method. So Socrates says he knows nothing, he means this. He's not just waiting for the other person to catch up with him, uh, gently prodding him or her in the right direction with supposedly neutral questions. But Socrates himself, he's involved in the search for truth or knowledge. So what does Socrates actually believe himself? So there are some things that Socrates actually believes, although he says that he, he knows nothing. There are some things he actually believes. He believes in the importance of reasoning things out, such as we can see that in the proposition about the unexamined life not being worth living. We can raise the question, well, why should life actually be unlivable if it is unexamined? You know, plenty of us do live like that and we are happy. Well, Socrates would say, well, yes, we all want to be happy. The desire for the good, our own happiness, this drives us all. And how do we know if what we are doing is contributing to that unless we reason things out? Socrates has the notion of the good life. So what is the good life? Socrates believes that what is good for the agent or any individual includes a central concern for others. So justice is a central part of his conception of the good life. Socrates believes that one should do nothing at all unless it is just. Though one should also, when circumstances demand it, act courageously, with restraint, with due respect to the gods. This implies an absolute commitment to safeguarding the rights of others or being prepared to die for one's friends and fellow citizens if the circumstances demand it. 
His own behaviour also suggests a concern for others' welfare. His philosophizing is not merely for the sake of caring for his own soul, whatever the soul may be, but for the sake of others' souls too. That is, the people that he philosophizes with. And caring for the soul seems to mean essentially not being misled by the obvious attractions of so-called bodily or material pleasures. Here again, justice enters the picture. A single-minded pursuit of such things, or egoism, would involve being prepared to trample over others if they ever get in our way. Socrates believes that no one should ever treat anyone else unjustly, even in return for injustice. One should never even harm anyone under any circumstances. And Socrates himself is actually prepared to die rather than as he believes harm the city and the laws by running away from prison and avoiding the court's legal verdict. So why why does he behave like this? Well, it's not out of any regard for moral values. He he simply thinks that it's a matter of what is good for him. What is best for Socrates is to accept the verdict, however unjust he believes it to be, and this is better than damaging the city to which he has ties to. For Socrates, justice is a matter of knowing what is good and bad for oneself. One of the Socratic paradoxes is virtue is knowledge. So Socrates believes that if we know what is best for us, then we cannot act otherwise. This is for one simple reason, that we all and only desire our own happiness. And if we know what contributes to this, then there is nothing except for outside forces that can prevent us from doing this. This is where we can see the importance of uh, philosophy for Socrates. Um, talking with anyone we can find to talk about how we should live our lives uh, the most interesting point of view uh, regarding uh, theorizing about education, it leaves no room for the notion of an irrational self. So while there may be all sorts of impulses born in us, you know, to get food and drink, to have sex, form close relationships and so on, there will be nothing in us to cause us to act contrary to what our reason has determined to be the best for us. So for Socrates, he believes no one does wrong or goes wrong willingly or voluntarily. This idea contrasts with Plato's bipartite soul, which consists of reason and unreason. Socrates believes if we do something freely, that something will be what we decided was best for us. This shows us the importance of uh, thinking things through for Socrates. Philosophy, the Socratic dialectic is all important and if we want to change behavior this is the only thing that will be mat that, that will matter. Um, Socrates believes that there is no point in trying other means, other irrational means such as beating people up or threatening them or offering them sweets or educating the desires, as Plato described it, uh, habituation, trying to, for example, get children to parrot improving verses, telling children the right stories, taking them to the best museums, bringing them up in the right environment. Socrates believed that there is no reason to uh, believe that any of this will have a lasting effect the effect will only be temporary it may frighten people into conformity or just stop them thinking about things but if we really want to reliably influence how people behave then the only thing we should do is talk to them and keep talking to to them socrates um, he also believed that it will do our children little good to be 
punished and similarly rewarded. There is no substitute, he believed, for reasoning with them and explaining why what we want them to do is good for them. So if you enjoyed this video, if you found it informative, please consider subscribing to the channel Education Dojo on YouTube for more videos about education. Bye and see you next time.